Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson, Director of the Bitcoin Education Project and Chief Executive Officer of Next Cryptography. Today we're going to go ahead and discuss how to go ahead and use PGP effectively with Mailvelope. PGP was invented in the early 90s by a gentleman named Philip Zimmerman. Uh, and uh, basically what he wanted to do was come up with a way to encrypt emails without using any really special software in a very friction seamless way. Um, unfortunately at the time most of the people who used email were fairly computer savvy and they were willing to embrace a lot more complexity than your end user typically does today. So although PGP actually works and its cryptography is incredibly elegant, very powerful, um, it generally does not have a lot of mainstream usage. Uh, that said, there's been a browser extension that was recently created called Mailvelope, which I will teach you how to install and use today, which I think makes the process significantly simpler. And also, if you are using it with your friends, family, and others, will actually go ahead and make your emails completely NSA proof, regardless of how much money they invest in trying to figure out what you're doing, for the most part. Um, so, let's go ahead and get started. If you click right here in the upper right hand corner of Google Chrome, you can click on Tools and Extensions, and you'll see down here Get More Extensions. Click on that. And go ahead and enter in the store Mailvelope, M-A-I-L-V-E-L-O-P-E. -E -E, and you'll see this extension right here, Mailvelope. I already have it installed, so it says added to Chrome. If not, you're just going to go ahead and click up there, and it'll just take a moment to install. After you've installed it, go ahead in the upper right hand corner, click on Mailvelope, click on Options, and the first thing you're going to see is Mailvelope Options Documentation About and a bunch of options down here display keys, import keys, generate keys, general security and watch list, and so forth. So don't care much about these guys. This is the functioning area of Mailvelope. So Mailvelope currently works with Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, and GMX. In the future, they'll probably support more email clients. Uh, it does not work with Outlook, nor does it work with Thunderbird. So any desktop mail client that you physically install uh, Mailvelope will not work with. But if you're using a mail client in the cloud, meaning you actually have Outlook or uh, Outlook doc, from Outlook.com or Gmail or so forth, uh, this will work quite nicely. Okay? So I'll assume that you guys are on Gmail, Yahoo, GMX, or Outlook.com, and we're going to go ahead and use um, Gmail to send an email. So you see I have a key right here, it's charles.hoskinson, that's my email address. And what we're going to go ahead and do is generate a new key for another email address I currently control. And I'm going to call this person Satoshi. And that particular email address is Satoshi Archive at gmail.com. And I'll go ahead and enter a passphrase. Okay. And you just click Submit. And it'll say, hey, I have to go ahead and wait a little while to generate it because there's a lot of ent entropy being generated from the screencast. It generates quickly, but sometimes it can take up to a minute to go ahead and generate the, your key. Okay, so it went ahead and generated a key for Mr. Satoshi. Yay. What does that actually look like? So a PGP key, and because this is a one-time key that I'm not going to use, I'll go ahead and display it for you, actually looks like this. It's this terribly ugly chain of letters and numbers and so forth, which is um, four, uh, four kilobytes long. And then there's an associated private key block. So this is the public key which is used to encrypt things, and this is the private key which is used to decrypt it. It's important to never share the private key with anybody. By default, this will be encrypted on your computer, and the only way to get it is to go ahead and use the uh, passphrase which I entered, or you, you'll enter when you generate the key, to go ahead and decrypt it. But in any event, this stays client side. It stays in your browser, and it's always encrypted by default. Um, never show this to anybody. This is terribly bad practice for me, but I'm going to delete this key right after I send this encrypted email. It's important to note out that if these keys are not backed up, if you lose the private key, you will not be able to decrypt the messages that are sent to you to your public key. Okay? So let's go ahead and encrypt an email. So I'm going to go to Gmail. 
and here's my Gmail account and so what I'm going to do is click compose type in Satoshi and since I've already sent an email there before it recognizes my email address and I'll say test okay so what you'll do is you'll notice since I've installed Mailvelope this little guy up here that this thing appears this little pencil with a piece of paper so click on that and all of a sudden you actually have a new window and all you really have to do is just go ahead and type something like test whatever you want to compose this is an example message and really what the magic is is when we click this little lock right here and it says who do you want to encrypt this for and since it recognized that I have in my library the public key for Satoshi I'll click add okay and it went ahead and encrypted the message with my PGP key and I'll click transfer that's really all I have to do so I'm gonna send it to myself and I'm gonna go over to my archive and here it is now if I didn't show you that private key the only person in the world who would be able to decrypt this message is me as long as I have both the private key and the passphrase to decrypt it. Mailvelope's really cool in that it actually automatically recognizes PGP messages and it will show you this nice little graphic. And all you got to do is just click the mailbox and it says, hey, um, enter your password and I can decrypt this for you. So I'll go ahead and enter the password and it says this is an example message. So a few things to point out. First, this PGP message that's sent is decrypted client side which means it's been decrypted on this computer and this computer only from Google's perspective it still looks like this Google has never seen a decrypted part of this message as this message traversed the internet it was encrypted so the only person capable of seeing the this is a test is actually me or anybody who has access to that private key as you all do because I displayed it on the uh, on the screencast video okay so that's basically Mailvelope in a nutshell you probably have a question of, well, what do I do if I, uh, I want to send a PGP message to somebody? Okay, that's fair. So let's go ahead and Google Satoshi's uh, public key. So Satoshi Nakamoto. Should I just go Nakamoto? This right here is Satoshi Nakamoto's public key. This is the public key that Satoshi used to identify himself when he went ahead and published Bitcoin, the specification for it. So all you have to do to import a key into your address book, somebody has to give you the key. Okay, You click on the little lock, you click on options, you click on import keys, and you just paste the key in and click submit. And it says, ha ha. I've successfully imported it. And what's so cool about the import process is that once you've imported it, it actually identifies the email address that's associated with the key. In the standard for making these keys, uh, Philip Zimmerman embedded email addresses. So every PGP to key to be generated actually requires an email address. Uh, and then that email address works its way into the PGP key block. So when you import a PGP key, you also get the email associated with it. And if you click on display keys, I now have the real Satoshi Nakamoto's public key. Okay, so all I have to do to um, to send Satoshi Nakamoto an email is I can just copy and paste an email address. I can go through the same process that I went through here, and uh, Satoshi Nakamoto will get an encrypted email. And the only person in the world who can decrypt it is the person who has a copy of Satoshi Nakamoto's private key, which ideally would be him. So that's basically uh, how to use Mailvelope in a nutshell. It's completely free software. It's very secure software. Uh, it's uh, wonderful for sending secure messages to your friends and family. Um, and if you have to do anything that requires a secure conversation, I would highly recommend using PGP to do so. Uh, and hopefully this tutorial has been easy enough to get you on your way. A uh, couple of security tips. Again, never, ever, 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 ever go ahead and share your private key with anybody. What I did in this lecture was showing you the private key is very bad. Your key's not secure if you've shared it even once. Another thing is if you want to export your key, my recommendation is to go ahead, 
select this key export is to display the key pair okay create a key file and encrypt the key file using some program like TrueCrypt or um, AES Crypt or so forth and then store that encrypted file on uh, a flash drive or on a burnt CD or something like that but always make sure that when you export that key file that you take it uh, and encrypt it with a strong password so never ever try to move your keys unencrypted and uh, try to leave the keys in the browser. The good thing about Mailvelope is that uh, once you've generated the key pair, they live in the browser for as long as you want them there. I will warn you, however, the keys are not portable. So if you lose the private key, you will not be able to regenerate it on a new computer. Uh, it, basically anything that's encrypted with that key is lost forever. So it's a good idea to create a backup somewhere where it's encrypted. Okay, so that's all I have to say. Um, give me some comments and feedback and let me know if um, there's anything else you'd like to know about Mailvelope or PGP. Thank you very much.